the gameplay reveal trailer for The Last of Us Part 2 was fake. In this video, we'll have a look at why, and Jimmy Fallon will help me with that. So The Last of Us was a huge disappointment to me. Now, that's not to say that it wasn't a great game, because it was, story-wise anyway, but the gameplay and the technology was pretty mediocre, at least compared to the E3 and Gamescom trailers. When the gameplay reveal trailer for The Last of Us Part 2 came out, a lot of people were calling it fake, and there was a huge backlash because of this. So much so that a developer who'd called it fake had to apologize to all the angry fanboys. But the problem is that it is fake, and so is every other video Naughty Dog has ever shown at big exhibitions like E3 and Gamescom. A lot of people assume we mean it's pre-rendered in some 3D software and not real gameplay. But that's not what we mean when we say fake. It absolutely is in engine and it is some gameplay, but it's not pure gameplay. It's gameplay interweaved with a lot of fake stuff. In this video, I'll explain not only why it's fake, but also provide some evidence that supports that claim. So let me start by proving how the trailers for the first game were fake and explain why I was so disappointed in The Last of Us. So during the development of The Last of Us, another game that I was excited for, Arma 3, was in development. So excited, in fact, that in a moment of spontaneity, decided to go to Gamescom in 2012, as it's only a six hour drive to Cologne from where I live, for a chance to get an early glimpse and play the game. But then I came across a booth featuring The Last of Us, which was entirely coincidental and not the reason I was there. But they were showing a live gameplay demo, an extended version of the Gamescom's trailer that had been released to the public on the internet already and that you can still find today. Now, the thing in particular that made me hyped as hell was the context-sensitive dialogue system they developed. Should we go around them? I'm not complaining. So Joel and Ellie would comment on the situation in real time, but the most impressive part of that was a hide-and-seek sequence where an enemy would scramble into a room, and as a player walked into the room, Joel would say, Where do you go? And this was not just immersive as hell, but basically revolutionary. A system that determines not only what enemies are doing, but what the player is doing, and is able to play context-specific dialogue for it. I mean, this is the reason I like the 2008 Prince of Persia reboot. I mean, you could talk to the companion you had about the situation at any time by pressing T, and it made the game and its world incredibly immersive. I get into this, and what is this I've got into? Girl falls from the sky. Should have taken that as a sign. Nothing's ever that easy. If it's any consolation, I'm glad you were there to land on. This is more exercise than I was planning today. But the problem is that that system doesn't exist, and most of what was shown, certainly all of the impressive stuff, wasn't actually in the game. The AI is dumb as fuck, and don't do anything like scrambling into rooms. Joel doesn't say cool shit when grabbing enemies. Not a fucking word. Ellie and Joel doesn't talk about the situation in a dynamic manner, and neither do the enemies. Hang back. Should we go around them? We should search the Shh, shh, quiet. Yeah, I hear him. Holy shit, Joel! Keep it together. Fuck! How many are there? I'm a shot one! <laughs> there! He's right by the door! There's no snap cover, and no standing cover, no leaning, no crouch run, enemies don't grab the player while he's in cover, etc, etc. And why not? They were fake. What they do is, they come up with what a scenario could look like if the game had been perfect. Then they choreograph it and script it. So you end up with a playthrough that looks absolutely amazing, but isn't real. Now some of these scripted events are based on the actual systems, but they are not THE actual systems. And then they've scripted things for which there is no actual system, like enemy scrapping the player while he's in cover, or physically taking ammo from a gun instead of just magically getting it. Maybe they were based on systems they intended to implement, but never did. In the end, they show a game with systems that the game doesn't possess and never has. It's misleading and dishonest. Now, there are a couple of things that were real, but then removed for the final game for whatever reason, like the crouch run. No doubt that was real, but they took it out. I'll come back to that when I talk about the actual gameplay later in this video and why it's bad. They record voiceover specifically for this fake playthrough that then further makes it feel incredibly immersive, but isn't actually dynamic. So, we're gonna pick it up from right as you walk through that door and get ambushed by the dude. <laughs> Get ready! Essentially, it's a very interactive cutscene. They start by planning out the playthrough like, okay, so Joel grabs the enemy and chokes him, and then once he picks up the ammo, an enemy walks out and spots him, etc. 
And so they pass this script onto the programmers, who then scripts the level to play out exactly this way. That is, they spawn the enemy here and make them go to the covet, then play animation to look in the drawers. This animation doesn't exist. These drawers aren't actually, uh, like, physical. They don't have, have animation in the actual game. And they've placed ammo on the ground that has been scripted to spawn an enemy when picked up. That plays a voice line, which has been recorded just for the playthrough. It's not a dynamic, hey, look what I found! line which is then interrupted by the what the fuck line no it's one line that was recorded specifically for this playthrough where the actor literally says hey look what i found what the fuck and you can also clearly see that this animation of joel picking up ammo was made specifically for this fake playthrough the reaction to getting spotted by the enemy is part of the animation he's then scripted to play an animation that's been made specifically for this playthrough to get him into that very specific cover with perfect movement resulting in what looks like very impressive ai when it's in fact not the actual ai but just an animation the person recording the playthrough then just has to play along grab the guy strangle him then pick up the ammo which will trigger the enemy spawn then shoot it doesn't matter if he does or not or if he aims a specific way he's just doing it for show and it's like that throughout. A bunch of actions and areas that trigger scripted events that have been created just to make the playthrough look perfect. People were very disappointed when the game came out and Naughty Dog had seemingly downgraded the AI, which was the only thing they noticed missing from the E3 trailer. In actuality, the AI had never been better than what it is in the final game. The E3 trailer just made it look a lot better because it was specifically scripted and animated in a perfect way. For example, if I make a game with a climbing system, that's not a trivial task, and making it look amazing and real is extremely challenging. But it's easy to get a real climber to mocap a specific climb, and then play that as an animation in my game, record it, and pretend it's actual gameplay. It looks super realistic because it is, but it isn't real. Let's quickly skim through the playthrough and pick it apart. Okay, so the first part is all real gameplay. These are actual scripted events that you encounter in the game. Ever stay at a place like this? I before... It all went to shit, I mean. No. This next line by Joel is an actual scripted line for this part of the game. The presenter matches the crouch with the line to make it look like he's saying it because it crouches. Right, just this week. Should we go around them? This line was purely for show for the E3 trailer. Ellie never makes any dynamic statements like this. I ain't seen a clicker in weeks. So the presenter is in control here. He's able to walk and do all the things you can do in the game. This is the actual character movement system. He just has to follow the script and go to certain areas and do specific things at the right time. Ellie is scripted for most parts of this video, like in this instance where she perfectly lines up with the wall. She never stands up in the actual game and she rarely takes cover in the sensible location. It's not her actual AI here, it's simply an animation triggered for this playthrough when the player gets near the cover. This AI has been intentionally placed here for the presenter to grab him. Fucking A, man. <laughs> Next, he picks up the ammo to trigger the enemy spawn event. If he instead ran down the hallway, there'd be no enemies anywhere, as it's not the actual systems in play here. Over Damn here. it! He's got a gun. Get ready! <laughs> Fuck you! You okay? It's nothing. Nothing happens by chance here. Joel getting shot is not random, but scripted as part of this playthrough, and Ellie reacting and Joel responding is all scripted too to make the game seem more immersive. The enemy here is intentionally made to look up from cover, and when the player is aiming at him, he's animated to go into cover, which then also triggers this event for the enemy running out and the player shooting him. The shooting here is scripted as well. I'll get back to that soon. Once again, Ellie is scripted to get into cover exactly where she does. She's not that smart in the actual game. And that is not the actual AI system, but simply the guy scripted to walk like that the moment the player gets into cover. This is another completely scripted event and not the actual AI ambushing the player. All the way to and including the player grabbing the enemy is one long scripted sequence. Here the presenter regains control and just has to walk outside the room with the grab enemy which triggers this scripted event of the enemy getting up and saying Let him go! The enemy will then just stand there waiting for the presenter to aim at him which will trigger an animation to perfectly go into cover behind that couch. He will then pop back up and wait for the presenter to shoot him. Knocking him out will trigger the next event of that enemy shooting and intentionally missing. The game is then waiting for the player to dry fire, which will trigger the enemy walking out and say, Shit! I know that sound! Ellie getting into cover exactly there is once again entirely deliberate so that she can throw that brick. Also notice how the enemy turns towards the player instead of Ellie who threw the brick. And that's to prepare him for the next sequence of Joel grabbing him and smacking his face into that table. While environmental takedowns are in the game, they're not that advanced. You can't first smack someone into a wall and then drag him over to a table somewhere. It has to be directly behind them. Things also aren't physical. Tables don't break and lamps don't fall off when you smack enemies into them. That's entirely for show for this trailer. 
Ellie doesn't react this impressively to dead enemies either. While she does react, it's just a brief, holy shit, Joel, with no impressive animation. This quote-unquote reaction is clearly mocap specifically for this playthrough, and includes her walking out from that specific cover. Hey, good job with all the, uh, you know, killing and stuff. Come on. And that come on from Joel is of course also added for show, and so is this. Down here! I'm telling you, gunshots! Yeah, I hear him. And once again, Ellie has been animated to perfectly get into that specific cover. Fuck! No! No! Holy shit, Joel! Keep it together. Another fake reaction with voice and animation, and Joel never responds to her reactions in the actual game. And more fake AI behavior here, this is also entirely animated purely for this playthrough. The struggle isn't in the game either, including the AI calling out. Ah, he's in here! Ah! And of course, this entire sequence isn't in the game either. Ellie does help Joel like this, but there's only like one animation and only for Joel standing. Nothing even remotely as advanced as this. And while you can get enemies in a position like this, their reactions are a lot less dramatic. It's more like... Look, man. So the gameplay trailers shown at E3 and Gamescom were scripted and not actual gameplay. And while there obviously was some gameplay, overall it's extremely misleading and not at all indicative of the actual game. But do I know for sure that's how it works? Yeah. First of all, it's obvious to anyone with the experience I have. But I also have proof. It took me a while to track down, but I managed to get a hold of a clip from an old episode of Late Night with Jimmy Fallon from 2012, where they played this exact playthrough live on the show. It's not just the video playing as the player moves differently, but it plays out exactly the same way. All right, let's talk about uh, the, the, the Last of Us. Yes, let's. So we can see here that the player doesn't move in the same way, so it's clear that this is a separate playthrough from the E3 one. Now, since the player doesn't move in the exact same way, the two videos are of course going to be out of sync. So I'm going to pause these clips to let them catch up to the scripted points so that we can compare. Fucking A, man. Yeah, he's done. When the presenter then picks up the ammo, that'll trigger the enemy spawn and voice line. He then just has to aim and shoot. No, the aiming and shooting has no determining factor, he's just pretending. And of course, being live, they don't have the luxury of playing through this a hundred times and then pick the one that looks the most perfect, so he fucks up the aiming here. While placing hands on things as he runs past it is a real mechanic in the game, this too is scripted for perfection in the trailer. We can see in the E3 trailer that it looks perfect. But in the late night presentation, we can see that the player slides over and unnaturally, as it's really a scripted animation playing, and he needs to be in the right spot for the hand to match. This is typical in games when objects and animations have to line up, like when opening a door, going through a crevice, lining up to pick up a body, grabbing enemies, etc. And you'll see this more later in this video. As if the tables were turned. The next scripted event triggers when he reaches the couch, which is the enemy popping up. When the player shoots, he puffs back into cover, and that triggers the player getting shot by the other guy. Remember when I said, the shooting here is scripted as well, I'll get back to that soon. Well, here we are. So this is not the player aiming and shooting. This is the game taking over to aim correctly and to shoot in time with the animation. The guy is playing one single animation of running and falling. Notice how the timing of the shots is identical down to the frame in both clips. And of course, this guy is scripted to peek and the other guy to run. They match frame by frame. Note that after the player got shot, he regained control, so he's the one going back behind the couch and running into the next room, pretending like someone may flank him from the adjacent room. Once he goes into cover, one of the enemies is scripted to walk like that. Not real AI behavior, it's scripted. Drugman actually slips up here and foreshadows Ellie picking up a brick. So Ellie's very capable as well, you're gonna see her picking up a brick in a second. Okay, right there. Having written this scripted scenario, he of course knows that's going to happen. So Ellie's very capable as well, you're gonna see her Picking up a brick in a second. Right there. Picking up a brick? Yeah. Oh, Ellie. Go, Ellie. Go, Ellie. Go, Ellie. Ellie. We got this, we got this. Let's see. This ambush is, of course, scripted too, and seeing as they also match up frame by frame as he grabs the enemy, I believe the grab is part of the scripted event as well. Then once he walks out the door, the enemy is scripted to pop up and wait for the player to aim before scrambling to cover. Note that while the aiming doesn't match perfectly, the shot does, indicating that at least the shot is handled by the game and not the presenter. And here, while the aiming is different, it ends up aiming at the exact same spot, so it could be that the game takes over here and gravitates the aim to that very specific point. Cause you're oh. shooting that crazy guy. 
Then you just have to knock him out, go behind the table and wait for the newly spawned enemy to peek out, then dry fire which triggers the enemy walking out and Ellie throwing a brick. Finally the player just has to walk up to the guy to play the scripted takedown sequence which includes the fake reaction. Yeah, she's with the brick. There, yeah. She got him pretty good. A so, good aim with that brick. Hey, hey, good job, job with all the, uh, you know, oh. killing and stuff. Yeah. And this is it, and you just kind of, just make your way through. Yeah, and you're trying to look for supplies, you're trying to find things that then you can, like, craft and make into weapons. Oh my gosh. I mean, it is like playing a movie. Yeah, you have no idea, Jimmy. Now, the playthrough ends a little earlier than the E3 one and doesn't have that crazy struggle where Joel blows a guy's head off. They probably thought that was too much for the audience. In either case, this was plenty. Now, before we get to The Last of Us Part 2, let me first talk about what makes the gameplay in The Last of Us 1 bad, or at least a lot worse than it could have been. It should have been. In my opinion, of course. So first of all, the thing that made me the most hyped about the game from the E3 trailer, the dynamic dialogue and reactions, which of course is not in the game because it's never existed. While Ellie does react, it's just simple lines of play. Holy shit, Joel. No animations or responses from Joel, and they don't talk to each other dynamically about the situation other than a few scripted lines here and there throughout. Nothing at all like what was depicted in the trailers, like this hide and seek sequence. Shit. There you are. Where the hell do you go? I got you now, you son of a bitch. It's just more of that fake scripted voiceover and AI behavior and scripted shooting, etc. Oh, and fake reactions, of course. Ellie! I'm here. Right here. Oh, God. I know, come on, let's just get a move on. The actual AI is just not impressive at all. This is the AI depicted in the trailers. Oh, shit! shit. Oh, he's got a gun! <laughs> Fuck! How many are there? I'm a shot one! There! He's right by the door! This is the actual AI. Running around like headless chickens, no sense of self-preservation and no vocal communication. Hell, there's barely any talking at all. Neither from the enemies nor Joel and Ellie. You'll hear the occasional emphatic go from Joel, but that's it. Run, Ellie. <laughs> Earlier I mentioned that Crouch Run probably was a real mechanic but was removed for the final game, and now I'm going to talk about the reason why. So, the mechanic I'm going to be discussing now has to be the most retarded mechanic implemented in a video game ever. Every enemy essentially has an invisible wall surrounding them, in the sense that you can't move towards them. If you move towards an enemy, they will shoot fast and get a near 100% accuracy, and their bullets stop you. If you move away from them, they shoot slower and has a near 0% hit accuracy, and bullets don't stop you. As soon as you start moving towards them again, they will once again get perfect accuracy and stop you. And it doesn't matter how far away they are. Even if they're in cover, you can't move closer because they will get up and insta-hit you so fast you can't react and crouch before they hit you. And that's why they removed Crouch Run, so you couldn't just crouch and then move towards them in cover. By removing Crouch Run, this stupid mechanic is able to serve its purpose and make the enemies artificially tougher. I absolutely hate this and every other mechanic in video games that are designed to make games tougher by artificially restricting your ability, not to your skills, but to nonsensical mechanics. Another example is Cliggers. They're these tough, scary creatures, but not because they're strong or fast, but because their attack is a one-hit kill cutscene. It's a cheap mechanic and not how an enemy should be made tough. It's so much a cutscene that even if you manage to throw a bottle or brick in their face, if it hits after the cutscene has started, whether they've actually grabbed you or not, they're impervious to it, as this is not the actual enemy, but an actual cutscene. Or Joel cowering when more than one enemy is nearby and you can no longer attack and have to run. You have to run not because you don't have the skill to fight multiple enemies at once, but because a retarded mechanic dictates that you must run. Mechanics have to be grounded in reality. These mechanics are akin to cheap jump scares in horror movies instead of actually making a scary story. Mechanics also have to be predictable, and I'm not talking about predictable enemies like that you should be able to predict every move an enemy makes. I'm talking about the mechanics. 
I have to be able to rely on mechanics, just like I can rely on the laws of physics to always be the same. If I throw a bottle in the face of a clicker that is charging me and it stuns it, it shouldn't then the next time do nothing. The mechanics in general seem unfinished and like they didn't put a lot of thought into them. For example, while the game has a quick turn mechanic, it's not optimal. While it's faster than turning the camera, it's a blocking action, meaning that until the camera is completely done turning around, you can't move. So if you need to run away, it's better to just move and turn yourself, as you can move away while turning then. It also means that you have to do actions in a specific order. If I run up to a bottle or break and hit quick turn, I then have to wait for the character and camera to fully turn around before the game will let me pick up the bottle. If I instead initiate the pickup first and then do the quick turn, it'll do them simultaneously, saving a bit of time. Quick turn is also not available while, for example, holding an enemy as a human shield. And unlike the trailers, takedowns are very one-dimensional. You can only perform them on things directly behind the enemy, and not like here where he proceeds to then drag him to the table. The same applies to Ellie helping Joel. There's only two animations, one for getting an enemy off of Joel in front, and one for behind. Now when I say two animations, I mean two kinds of animations. There are a couple of variations, but none from the side, for example. So if Ellie is not directly in front or behind, you'll see her do these stupid circles around the enemy to their back before jumping on. It's like the takedowns in Ellie helping Joel were supposed to be much more profound, but they never finished them for whatever reason, and it's a real shame. This is the PS3 calculating, building this world around the game around you. Yes, yeah, so we, we have seriously been advancing all of these systems so that we can make a game that's as realistic and as cinematic as possible, but completely unscripted. Completely unscripted. Completely unscripted. And with that, we move on to The Last of Us Part 2, specifically the quote-unquote gameplay reveal trailer. Now, sadly, I don't have another clip of this playthrough to compare with. However, as The Last of Us 1 has shown, it's most definitely a scripted playthrough, and I can still take it apart and provide my two cents on various parts of this trailer. Actually, I know for a fact that they've done the exact same thing as they did with the first one, because they have admitted as much. Although they don't like to refer to it as scripted, they instead bent the truth a little and used the word deterministic. Kotaku writer Steven Tutillo said in an article that during E3 2018, he had a conversation with Druckmann who said, quote, So at an E3 demo, you take complicated systems that are random, and we're making them deterministic, and we play it a lot and rehearse it and choreograph it so that we're showing off very specific things. But those are all real systems that players will experience when they play the game. <laughs> Will they now? Will they? Because uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's not quite how it worked out for the first game. Now what's it, mate? <laughs> no. So let's dissect this video. Now before we start, let me just point out that the sprinkling of fakeness isn't nearly as bad for The Last of Us 2 as it was with The Last of Us 1. It's as fakely perfect as the first one, but in terms of the features that were actually in the game, uh, it's a lot better. So Ellie stabs this guy in the neck, and he's bleeding all sorts of ways. First of all, this animation was obviously recorded for this trailer specifically. The actual takedowns won't be quite as long, and that's a good thing. That aside, the effects look a bit more detailed and realistic than what we see in the actual gameplay here. The blood is pouring out in both the actual gameplay and the reveal trailer. However, a major detail in the reveal trailer is missing from the actual gameplay. If you get stabbed, if you can, you want to keep the blade in the wound as it acts as a pluck and keeps you from bleeding out. This realistic detail is in the trailer, but in the actual game it just starts pouring out while the blade is still in the neck. Let's up the contrast and brightness so we can have a more detailed look and compare. In the trailer the blood seems to spill onto the clothes all the way down the coat and get slowly painted onto Ellie's arm. In the actual gameplay it seems to be limited to a couple of blobs here and there, Though it does seem to still be somewhat dynamic, as evident by the blood getting on the hand as it goes into the bloodstream. In the reveal trailer, the guy is also bleeding profusely from his mouth, covering a large part of his face and all of Ellie's hand. That detail is not in the actual gameplay at all. Next, Ellie puts the blade away. Either the timing has changed, or this was just another trailer thing for show. In either case, we can't confirm it with the footage we have at the moment. However, actual weapon switching sure doesn't look quite as impressive as in the trailer. Next, two frogs jump across the screen. While I'm sure there'll be frogs in the game, this encounter was a little too perfect to not have been scripted to jump across exactly there at that exact time, just for the trailer. 
As we've learned from The Last of Us 1, nothing in this trailer is by chance, and neither are those AIs walking exactly there, so we'll skip right past this. But we will come back to these two later. Those crows could be another detail just for the trailer, but they could also be an actual event either for just this place, or dynamically every time there are bodies hanging. And so could that ragdoll effect. That hand placement on the car absolutely is real. However, it could of course have been scripted to play exactly that way each time just for perfection for the trailer, like the first game when Joel runs down the corridor. However, it is a real mechanic and it does look great in the game. So a big thing in this trailer that everyone is hyped about is the animation. And it's sadly the fakest part of this trailer. We have perfect animations in games these days thanks to motion capture. It's the transitions between animations that is a problem. And there is only two things that can make transitions look this perfect. And that's faked mocap AI behavior, like the first game's trailers, and machine learning. And we know for a fact that they're not using machine learning. They're using motion matching, which is pretty amazing in its own right, but it's not perfect. If you don't know anything about game development, there are a couple of different ways to make characters come alive. There are two parts to making a character move. Playing an animation on the character model, and moving the model across 3D space. Combined, they create the illusion that the character is moving. While the game logic for moving a character linearly in a 3D space is easy, moving the character with complex animation is typically achieved using a technique known as root motion, where the character movement in 3D space is driven by the animation itself. So even complex movement is not hard. The hard part is getting all the animations to work together, transitioning between them. For example, if I'm playing a walk animation on my character and switch to a running animation, there'll be a very clear cut. This is where blending comes in. Blending smooths the motion of the bones from one animation to the other, so you don't get this abrupt cut to another animation. But animation blending doesn't solve everything. The problem with animation blending is that for most things, you'll very clearly notice a blend from one animation to another, since it does just that, blends the animations. So if you have one animation with a feed in one place, and another animation with a feed in a different place, excuse my crude animation, I'm no animator, blending will simply smooth the motion from the foot placement in the first animation to the foot placement in the second, and thus you see a transition. The bigger the difference in the poses of the two animations, the bigger and more obvious transition you get. Motion matching takes this a lot further by not just simply smoothing between two animations, but automatically blending between many, not just different animations, but parts of animations to end up in the desired animation in the best way possible, taking things like velocity into account. But this too isn't perfect, as the animations still need to be there. It's a lot better than just basic blending, but it isn't a miracle solution. And finally, there is machine learning, which is the only thing so far that's been able to make transitions entirely seamless by not only blending animations, but synthesizing new animation on the fly. Providing what appears like one long mocap sequence, but is in fact many separate animations put together by a neural network. Which is exactly what we see here. What appears like one long mocap sequence with seemingly no transitions or blends from one animation to another. Yet they claim it's not machine learning, but simply motion matching, despite there not being any difference in the foot placement ever. Unless they've mocapped every death animation 300 times with different foot placements every time, that is not just motion matching. Remember this? Yeah, that's probably the same thing going on here. One animation that includes the walk, standing still and falling over, with the game shooting automatically to perfectly time the shot with a fall. Ellie is one of the few things in this trailer that is the actual animation system. So if you observe Ellie, you'll see the actual motion matching system in action. And if you observe her carefully, you'll start to see some imperfections, while the AI having none, even though you'd think the main character would be the one they do the most coverage for. You can really see the motion matching system shine here with great motion and even switching leading foot. But then you see the fake animations of the AI characters here, evident from not just the perfect transitioning, but the fact that he starts to look under the truck as part of the kicking animation, much like the reaction here was part of the ammo animation. And then we have this sequence of melee combat, supposedly. I highly doubt this is the actual systems in play here. The foot placement especially is just way too perfect, even for motion matching. There's not a single hitch or evident transition anywhere. And while the dodging is real, I'm not so sure you can dodge into things, and if you can, I doubt the car moving is anything more than a fancy detail added just for the trailer. I mean, I'd love to be wrong on that, but it remains to be seen. 
But I think this entire melee sequence is actually scripted. I think the game is doing everything automatically here, from the aiming and shooting to the dodging and meleeing. It's one scripted sequence to make it look perfect for the trailer. And this right here is a major factor in why I believe that to be the case. Did you catch it? No? I touched on this subject a bit earlier when Joel placed his hand on a wall while running. When games need to play scripted scenarios on a character, for example, the character needs to open a door or pick up an arrow where the character has to be in a perfect spot for the animations to look right, the game will smoothly slide the character into position. It's very subtle here, but you can see as she gets to the guy, she slides forward like she's pulled by a magnet to get into perfect position to grab the arrow. <laughs> Normally when she stops moving, she'll just stop moving, but here she stops and then the game pulls her forward to a specific point like when picking up the arrow, as if she needed to be exactly there. And here is another long-ass sequence of fake mo AI behavior. It's not just perfect animation, but the speech and the body language, etc. is perfect. If this was the actual AI, someone's about to launch Skynet. Even Ellie looking around here is part of this whole scripted sequence. And this sequence of searching under the cars is one long mocap sequence just for the trailer, including the death. No transitions whatsoever, the feet don't even move an inch. The amount of death animations they'd need to mocap just for dying while checking under a car would be insane. Now fortunately, this little detail of cocking the hammer is an actual thing in the game. Although it's very slow here and she does it just before the woman ducks under the car. Again, it's part of a trailer-exclusive mocap representing the actual system. The aim here also snaps perfectly, definitely not manual aim, yet it's not the gameplay auto-aim, as that will require letting go and repressing the aim button. So it's clearly the game taking over again here to perfectly place and time the shot with a mocap death. It also ramps up the speed of the aim in a very unnatural manner here, further indicating an algorithm doing the aiming and not a human. <laughs> And this is another thing that is an actual feature in the game, but again, scripted for perfection for the trailer. Her crawling out and then getting pulled out is also clearly one long animation. In fact, I'd say the entire thing, including her aiming, starting to crawl out, and then getting pulled out is one long mocap sequence. Especially since games are very stateful. For example, once you start crawling out from underneath something, the state changes from being under something to crawling out, which typically would no longer allow actions that require the state to be being under something. I mean, if they wanted to make it possible for enemies to pull you out after you started crawling out, they'd have to define things like for how long into the crawl out animation they'd be able to do it, and they'd need animations for that, not only for various stages of crawling out, but for pulling you out in these various stages from both sides. I mean, it'd be great, but I highly doubt they've done that. That'd be a huge amount of work for something that is so small. Rockstar has an insane attention to detail, and not even they have something like that. And this is scripted too. The way he pulls out the weapon and tries to swing, the way he's holding it and the position he's starting to move from, there'd be no power in the swing. It's like he's expecting to get interrupted. There's just no follow through. It's as if he slows down the swing before he gets shot. And then there's the fact that the hit reactions have absolutely no change in the hand and feet positions from the swing. This isn't just smooth transition. This is transitioning into animations that have the hands and feet in the exact same positions as the previous. I mean, they'd need an insane amount of animations for reactions alone. Another scripted sequence for perfection. There are a couple of telling signs here. First of all, the player is not exactly on the right track here, and you can see the game correcting the jump direction slightly to the left. While running, she's headed here, but it's incorrect it's slightly left to land here. Another sign here is how the bottle perfectly leaves her hand, while in the actual gameplay footage it seems to be from a fixed position relative to the character, not her actual hand, which the further her hand is from that point, the less impressive it looks. Got something. We'll look into it. Another little detail here is that she reacts to the bottle before it hits her, which is great, but I doubt that's an actual thing. And as Ellie walks up here, not only is the grabbing perfect, but not having her gun out, she equips it as part of the animation. In the actual footage, the weapons just appear in her hand. The rest of this is just over-the-top scripted. From the way they stack up, which is just straight out of a movie, 
to the way they search. It all just appears like one long mocap sequence. Very natural movement and checking around the corners, etc. If you observe the actual AI, you get the typical pathfinding stuff with unnatural 45 degree turns, etc. Pulling out arrows is an actual feature, but it'll be interesting to see if arrows always hit in that exact spot to fit the animation or if it's more dynamic. While you can definitely find arrows here and there, I'm not sure you'll take them from bodies like this. I think this is just for show for the trailer, especially that rectal. And the animation is also very clearly made for this specific spot. In the actual game, it'll probably be more like general picking up, where things just float into your hand. Now, there could definitely be points in the game where a body has been deliberately placed like this, with animations made for the specific pose the body's in, but definitely nothing dynamic. A lot going on here. That C falling down is most likely just for show for the trailer and won't fall down in the actual game. And the animations that will be required here for these melee attacks would be insane. The shells falling down is another fake thing just for show as well. Remember the sliding of Ellie here and here? The same thing happens here to prepare her for this next scripted melee sequence, as she has to be in the perfect place for that to play out right. If enemies do throw Ellie over things like counters like here, it's certainly not going to be as ridiculously smooth and perfect as portrayed here. More of that fake stuff mocap specifically for this trailer, and shells aren't going to fall. Oh, you, you think the environment is going to act like that? You mean like this? And this? And this? Neither happened in the actual games and were just for show. Okay, this could all be happening. The enemy could be throwing Ellie over counters with the glass breaking and then walking around and hitting at her and the shells falling down. However, if that turns out to be the case, it's definitely just going to be specific areas, like this room where all the props are then wrecked with specific points where the enemy can throw Ellie over, which then place animations made specifically for that object in that position, etc. But that would mean that this specific enemy type is rare, and this would be some kind of boss battle. In that case, that's still bad from a consumer standpoint, because it seems like a general mechanic. People are like, wow, enemies can throw Ellie over tables like this, and wow, when enemies hit props, they interact realistically, etc. This entire thing is scripted too, and they actually fucked up here. The woman with a bow has to be in a specific place for when Ellie has squeezed between the shelves and attacks, so she's teleported while obstructed by the shelf, but they fucked up and you can see her disappear from one frame to the next here. And as she's killed, not only does she fall perfectly, dramatically breaking her neck, but the drawers are physical and reacts to her hitting them. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sorry people, but today's real-time physics engines don't give you that kind of accuracy. And then not only do they want us to believe that this is actual melee gameplay with perfect animations and transitions, with hundreds of variants of animations for all the perfect foot and hand placement, but then also variations of each of those for stepping over dead bodies at the same time! Because anyone who deals in game animation knows that upper or lower body only animation looks amazing for complex animations. Sarcasm alert! <sighs> Now, this last stand is also a scripted thing for the trailer, and won't actually happen here in the actual game, but neither will the rest of what's been shown in this trailer. Not like this, anyway. Hell, in the final version, a lot of things will probably be different just to prevent people from trying to recreate the trailer. Okay, let's look at the actual gameplay and compare. But first, remember these two? Here's a much more believable representation of motion matching. I would believe this is the actual system. Notice how once the enemy has jumped down and transitions to the walk animation, there's a very clear change in movement speed. If you go through this video and observe Ellie, not during the scripted events obviously, but during the general locomotion, you'll see the imperfections like this unnatural turn to getting cover due to the lack of animation coverage. Alright, let's go through some of the actual gameplay we've received so far. So here we have some very evident foot sliding because you have to get into the right position. To avoid that, they need to make her move closer with locomotion animations before starting to grab, or record a lot of animations for beginning to grab at different distances, or have some other system like machine learning that can synthesize the extra steps. In the trailer, there's no foot sliding and it's basically perfect. Notice also here how the hand has IK, uh, inverse kinematics for those of you who are not into game development jargon. IK is used to move hands and feet, for example, to a very specific location in the game world, essentially figuring out where the lower and upper arm should be to put the hand at the bottle. 
This is used whenever she picks up stuff, but notice how in the trailer there's no IK at all and she just reaches out. That only works because they've ensured she ends up exactly at that position when she's at that frame in the animation. In this section, we get what appears to be AI behavior identical to the trailer, but it's obviously just a scripted event that always happens here after you jump over that fence. Notice how the player obviously isn't in control here. Then they transition into the actual AI, which looks like every other game. Did you see her? No, but the fucking guy is nearby. Shit. We're looking for two! Fuck's all that smoke. He blew up one of our trucks. How'd you let that happen? Just find them. I WANT THOSE FUCKING TRESPASSERS! Here is that IK again I was talking about earlier. Instead of just relying on animation, the hand is moved dynamically to reach the bottle as closely as possible. And here is the actual AI following a path, turning unnaturally like every other AI in history, and not the perfectly natural manner depicted in the trailer. I'm happy to say that the enemies calling each other by name is an actual thing. What is it? Someone took him out! Hmm? We got something. But then you've got this woman behind Ellie who hears her and is going to investigate the sounds. Didn't she hear the guy just yell out he found a fucking body? I mean, the, the, in general, the animations and transitions look great, and here the melee attack is even perfect. I really hate that they do these fake E3 trailers. It's not like Imperfections is gonna turn me away from the game, like this glitch where the system can't quite figure out which way to turn Ellie, and it ends up looking pretty weird. So here's the perfect example of this issue I was talking about earlier, where you have an animation with a feed in one place, and another with a feed in another place, and you get this noticeable transition when it blends from one animation to the other. So she walks through the door, then blends to the spotting animation and the feed slide, which is absent entirely in the trailer. <laughs> and here again is that typical path following AI. Walk straight, turn 45 degrees, walk straight, turn another 22 degrees, etc. Rigid and unnatural movement, unlike the trailer. And here it is again, vaults up, then turns very rigidly and unnaturally. And if neither of those were clear enough, take a look at this guy. <laughs> I mean, if you still think the trailer is representative of the actual game, then I, I don't know what to tell you. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying it's not going to be an amazing game. I'm not trying to turn people away from buying or playing the game or games. I'm trying to bring awareness to the problem of fake E3 trailers and to stop this misleading, dishonest practice of false advertisement. I understand wanting it to look the best, but making fake gameplay videos is not the way to do it. Passing scripted fake gameplay off as real gameplay that in the end is selling your game on points that aren't real shouldn't be condoned. If your game doesn't possess features or content at the time, then either don't show those features or content, or postpone your trailer until such a time your game does. Don't create fake gameplay, even if you intend on providing such features or content, because even then, your fake scripted gameplay will always be heaps better than the actual systems. People look at these trailers and they see things like a revolutionary animation system, and they get hyped, thinking it's real. The technical aspect of this is far more impressive, like, that's getting all of my attention right now. There's no way this should actually be possible, in my opinion. Not from any other game we've ever seen. She pulled an arrow out of that guy and took it. If, That's really listen, cool. Listen, if this is not real gameplay, I'm gonna be severely disappointed. This is gonna be kill zone levels of disappointment. What do you think, it's fake gameplay? gameplay? This yeah, is this, it, is, this is real. This is real, yeah, level up, this is real. Yeah, there's no yeah, way it can't be. This is it. This is the game. We're looking at it. I know. I can understand why it would be hard to believe, because it looks that freaking good. That's what I'm saying, like that's... Yeah. They've worked out animation for every single freaking thing she could possibly do. Listen, cool. if this is not real gameplay, I'm gonna be severely disappointed. This is gonna be a kill zone level. I'll fix that for you. If this is not real gameplay. It's fake gameplay? gameplay? Yeah. And even after actual gameplay comes out, in their hype, they don't realize that part of what made them hyped is no longer there. And when the game finally comes out, 
people either forget how it was depicted pre-release, or people who start noticing that animations aren't quite what they were in the trailers, or the AI isn't remotely as revolutionary as advertised, they just end up blaming it on low memory and whatnot, when in fact it's simply that it never existed to begin with. I mean, the AI portrayed in the E3 trailer for The Last of Us 1 is still heaps more impressive than any AI in games in 2020. And it isn't just bad for consumers, it's bad for other developers. Other developers may show great games, but because they show real, authentic gameplay without all the fake eye candy and perfection, people are like, you should see this made-up fake name of game with fake gameplay instead. It's a technical marvel, not like this weak-ass looking game. Other honest developers are at a disadvantage because they're honest, which shouldn't be punished, but commended. And it's an even bigger problem when developers are chastised for speaking out against the fakeness and are at risk of losing their jobs despite being in the right. And it isn't just consumers that believe these trailers, but various people like a Ubisoft senior animator and large channels like Digital Foundry who have made detailed analysis videos trying to theorize and explain how Naughty Dog have managed to create the most revolutionary animation technology on the planet. When authorities like these either believe it's real too, or realize it's fake and just does it for views, who knows? How is the layman consumer going to know it's fake? Now, it's not uncommon to choreograph E3 trailers showing off specific things, like when Techland showed Dying Light 2 free running. That wasn't just scripted. They had testers play that sequence for a week before the showcasing to ensure they were able to pull off all the right moves at the right times. And that's fine. What isn't fine is entirely fabricating a trailer that no one could possibly reproduce when the final game is released. And I'm not talking about moving a couple of trees or barrels so a rooftop isn't reachable from the exact same place as a trailer, but core features like an animation system depicted so revolutionarily that is what everyone talks about. What Naughty Dog is doing is essentially target gameplay. For example, look at this amazing gameplay footage from Assassin's Creed 3. Looks amazing, right? And much better than what we received, but it's fake. This isn't gameplay at all, but what's known as target gameplay. When a developer knows what they want their game to be, they create a video in animation software to show publishers what they're aiming for and to give them an idea of whether it's something that they'd want to invest in. It's not real gameplay, but it isn't passed off as real gameplay and it isn't shown to the public. What you see here is made entirely in animation software and doesn't involve any gameplay code whatsoever. <laughs> Here's another example for For Honor, entirely made in animation software and not actual gameplay. And this one from Prince of Persia Redemption, which never saw the light of day, also entirely made in animation software with no actual gameplay code involved. They did an animation job making it look like gameplay. Finally, this one from the last... Uh, oh, wait. Okay, so I want to talk about this sequence a bit more, because while this is ridiculously good looking, and motion matching alone wouldn't result in anything this amazing looking, it is possible that they made each attack and reaction uh, sort of pair in a chain. For example, with the first hit, the enemy has a number of different reaction animations you can play. And from there, subsequent hits are not then just playing an animation from that same pool of animations again, but rather a new pool that has been mocapped to start in the position that the previous pool ended in. That is, they all begin in the same position as the end of each animation in the previous pool, and any subsequent hit would follow that same pattern. That'd make the combat less dynamic and feel more forced though, as the attacks would have to be at specific times, rather than exactly when the player hits the melee button. But it's a possibility. <laughs> Now, before I continue, let me just point out that in the middle of working on this video, the State of Play trailer was released with new gameplay footage, and we're going to take a look at that now, because, oh boy, it's nowhere near as impressive as a fake gameplay trailer. And in spite of that fact, people are still, oh look, it looks amazing and 100% identical to the 2018 gameplay reveal trailer. So let's have a look. So obviously, the animations look great, which was never in dispute. Animations have looked great in games for years, thanks to motion capture technology. What is hard, and what was so revolutionary in the gameplay reveal trailer, was the transitions, switching from one animation to another. 
we've seen that blending is one option, motion matching is another, machine learning is a third, or you can do what Naughty Dog is actually doing and have no transitions at all. For most of the actual footage shown, there are no transitions whatsoever. It just cuts directly from one animation to another. Now granted, it isn't every animation, but sadly it's enough to make it look unsmooth overall, at least to my eye. We can see that the feet actually do stay in place quite well, with the exception of a couple of places, like here where the right foot slides forward, at the same time the left slides backwards, which of course isn't possible without jumping a bit to remove the friction. The arms in most cases here also match up pretty decently. There are a couple of places where the character slides around without moving the feet, which is typical in games. All in all, this is a lot more believable, especially with all the snap transitions, than the original reveal trailer, and obviously not as impressive. It could sound like nitpicking, but it's really not when considering what was shown at E3. E3 depicted revolutionary animation technology with no perceivable transitions between animations, which is clearly not how the actual animation system is. It's good if you ignore the inexplicable lack of transition entirely in some of the animations, but it's not perfect. And certainly, locomotion is not much more impressive than the average game, and the combat animation I think comes down more to mechanics than animation system like I mentioned earlier with a chain of animations. Let me expand on that explanation a little, and this of course is speculation on my part. So instead of playing a random reaction and hit animations, it's all based on the previous attack in the chain. So Ellie plays one attack animation, which has a specific reaction animation. The next attack is rather fixed in the timing. For example, the second attack will always come out at a specific time. If you don't attack, the enemy will just play the entire reaction animation, which will at some point transition into idle. If the player hits melee again, the system plays another attack animation that hits at the time the second reaction begins, which has been mocap by starting the actor in the approximate pose the attack animation will hit in the first reaction, and so on. That way you have near perfect foot and hand placement. It's rather difficult to explain without visuals, so let me see if I can jerry rig some of the footage here to better visualize the concept. For each attack animation, the actor who mocapped the combat animations, which I doubt was Ashley, they swing and end in this pose. After a short time, like half a second, that'll then transition to idle. If, however, the player hits a melee button at some point before the animation reaches this point, or at around this point, the system plays a second attack animation where the actor has started in this pose that the previous attack animation ended in, and so on. If the player had hit the melee button again, a third attack animation would play where the mocap actor has started in approximately this pose. For the reactions, if the player doesn't perform another melee attack, the reaction animation just plays in its entirety, then transitions back to idle. If the player hits the melee button, the attack animation is triggered at a specific time to ensure that it hits when the reaction animation is in approximately this frame, at which point another reaction that has been mocap from this pose starts. The same could apply to dodging. The animations are basically very tightly coupled. For example, in the finishing move, that's obviously motion capture by two actors together, but the animations on the two characters are not started at the same time. When the player starts the attack, the system has already determined that the enemy is low enough on health for a finishing blow and which animation pair to play on the two characters. It plays Ellie's animation first, and when the attack connects, it, uh, blends the second character into their part of the animation, and it looks like they're very much interacting with each other. So the enemy is still playing the reaction animation when Ellie performs the beginning of the finishing move. The enemy then is transitioned into his part of the move as the attack connects. It's an interesting and very good way to do things if you ignore the transitions, or lack thereof. Motion matching obviously helps with this, and it makes stitching the animations together much easier than having to cobble them manually. Now a last note before I go, I just want to emphasize that I'm not saying the game isn't going to be good. In fact, I'm pretty sure that unlike The Last of Us 1, I'm going to enjoy the gameplay of The Last of Us 2 if I can get over the animation transitions. My grief is entirely with fake trailers, and in the end it doesn't matter whether the game is garbage or an absolute masterpiece. Spicing up E3 trailers is one thing, but what Naughty Dog is doing is just downright false advertisement. All the shit that got me excited for the first game in its E3 trailer wasn't there at all, and while a lot of the features shown at E3 for The Last of Us 2 is going to be in the game in some form, it's not going to be to the same level. The animation system isn't remotely as impressive as the E3 trailer. What we get is pretty good, but the E3 depiction was revolutionary. Enemies probably aren't going to throw Ellie over counters and realistically break props except as some rare boss battle of some kind. 
I'm probably going to do a part two, no pun intended, where I compare the reveal trailer to actual gameplay. Anyways, I think this video has gotten long enough, so I'll end it here. Thanks for watching, and uh, bye bye We lost another soldier!